Wrist pain causes and treatment. The important anatomy on the volar aspect of the wrist. Here you can see the location of the radial artery, the median nerve, the ulnar artery, and the ulnar nerve. You can also see the thinner muscles and the hypothenar muscles. You can see the transverse carpal ligament and the flexor retinaculum. You can also see the structures within the carpal tunnel, the nine flexor tendons, four tendons for the flexor digitorum superficialis, and four tendons for the flexor digitorum profundus. In addition to the most radial structure, which is the flexor pollicis longus, and the median nerve lies within the carpal tunnel. You can see there are eight carpal bones, four proximal and four distal. So if we talk about the carpal bones, these are the scaphoid, the leonate, the traquitrum, the busy form, the trabezium, trabezoid, cavitate, hamate. You can see here the hook of the hamate. Let's talk about carpal tunnel syndrome. What is the clinical picture of carpal tunnel syndrome? Pain and numbness and parathesia in the palmar aspect of the thumb, index, and long finger. This is the area of median nerve distribution. Patient will have night symptoms. Symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome usually occur more at night. These symptoms wake the patient up from sleep, causing the patient to shake the hand in attempt to resolve these symptoms. Patient will have a positive Tinel's sign. Percussion of the volar wrist crease produces electric sensation distally to the fingers. Fallon's test is usually positive with carpal tunnel syndrome. The Fallon's test is performed by flexing the wrist for about 60 seconds. This will increase the carpal tunnel pressure temporarily and produce the symptoms. If the test is positive, the patient will have numbness and tingling in the hand and wrist. Positive compression test. This is the most sensitive test. The examiner places even pressure with two thumbs directly over the patient's median nerve in the carpal tunnel for about 30 seconds. Reproduction of the symptoms in the distribution of the median nerve means that the test is positive for carpal tunnel syndrome. Self-administered hand diagram is extremely helpful, most specific test for carpal tunnel syndrome. The patient should highlight the areas where they are experiencing the symptoms. To the right, there is a normal hand, and to the left, you can see the affected hand. Patient may complain of thinner atrophy, weakness, or clumsiness of the hand. The patient history and examination is usually an indication for carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a clinical diagnosis. So what is the treatment of carpal tunnel syndrome? The treatment is usually anti-inflammatory medication, activity modification, avoid activities that aggravate the symptoms. Neutral wrist splints. It helps nighttime symptoms because it lowers the carpal tunnel pressure. Functional wrist splints, about 30 degree of extension, will aggravate the carpal tunnel syndrome because it increases the carpal tunnel pressure. At three months, 50% of patients will improve with splints. At 18 months, more patients will improve with splints. Steroid injection used for the treatment and for the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. If clinical examination or the electrodiagnostic test is not clear, 
If the patient temporarily improves from injection, then the patient will definitely improve from surgery. How do you do the injection? Mark the intersection of the palmaris longus tendon and the distal palmar crease. Next, go one centimeter proximal and one centimeter ulnar to that site. This will be the point of injection. Use a 25 gauge needle with the desired steroid and 1 ml of 1% lidocaine. Put the needle at a 45 degree angle to the skin of the rest. Direct the needle towards the base of the thumb and advance the needle distally and slowly. The physician should warn the patient before the injection that if any feeling of numbness, parathesia, or severe pain exists, to let the physician know about it. The steroid injection gives 80% transient improvement and 22% of the patient will be free of symptoms one year after the injection. Surgery will be a carpal tunnel release, open or endoscopic. Here is a representation of an open carpal tunnel release. Surgery of carpal tunnel release is usually done when there is persistence of the symptoms and failure of the non-operative treatment. Injection is a good prognosis for improvement after surgery when the splint no longer works and the one steroid injection only gives temporary improvement. Injection is a good prognosis for improvement from surgery. The median nerve is much like a truck passing through a tunnel. The truck, the nerve, should be able to pass through the tunnel with ease and without friction. If the tunnel is narrow, then the nerve, the truck, cannot pass. If you want the nerve to pass, then widen the tunnel. The tunnel is widened by cutting the transverse carpal ligament as seen in this example. Graham stated that if the patient has a strong history and the clinical examination for diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome, then the electrodiagnostic test is unlikely to change the clinical diagnosis. What is the outcome of the surgery? The pinch and grip strength improves, and at one year, 20% of patients with severe carpal tunnel syndrome will continue to have symptoms. Revision carpal tunnel usually occurs when there is an incomplete release. 25% will have no relief. Only 25% will have complete relief of the symptoms. Radial wrist pain, decurvain syndrome. Pain is located over the radial thumb side of the wrist. Pain and the swelling over the thumb side of the wrist that may cause difficulty in grabbing with the thumb. Inflammation of the sheath or the tunnel that surrounds the two tendons that control movement of the thumb. The abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis. You can see the tendons here in this diagram. What are the activities that may cause Ducorvain syndrome? Twisting, wringing out with towels, hammering, skiing, lifting heavy objects. Pain is usually located at the base of the thumb and to the side of the wrist. It is hard to differentiate between Decorvain syndrome and basilar thumb joint arthritis. In Decorvain, you will get positive Finkelstein test. In basal thumb arthritis, you will get positive grind test. How do you do the Finkelstein test? The test is conducted by having the patient make a fist with the fingers closed over the thumb and the wrist is bent towards the little finger. The hand is pulled so that the involved tendons are stretched, causing sharp local pain if injury and inflammation is present. 
a grind test for basal thumb arthritis by axial loading, pushing, and rotating the thumb with a carpal bone, grinding may be felt within the joint, and the patient will experience pain. What is the treatment of Decorvain syndrome? Conservative treatment, brace, injections around the tendon, and surgery, surgery with failure of non-operative treatment. How about the Decorvain release surgery? Release the involved first dorsal compartment at the rest. The abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis tendons are freed from the surrounding retinaculum and tendon sheath. Intersection syndrome. What is an intersection syndrome? Intersection syndrome is a painful tenosynovitis involving the tendons of the extensor carbi radialis longus and the extensor carbi radialis brevis. There are six extensor compartments of the wrist. The pathology occurs due to stenosis of the second dorsal wrist compartment. The intersection syndrome is an overuse injury caused by repetitive wrist extension with pronation and supination. The intersection syndrome can occur in weightlifting, rowing, and in racket sports. An area of pain and tenderness is located at the intersection between the muscles of the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis as these two muscles cross over the tendons of the extensor carbi radialis longus and brevis. The patient may describe squeaking sensation with wrist motion. This intersection syndrome is sometimes called the squeaker's rest or the crossover tendinitis. When the first and the second dorsal wrist compartments pass over each other, it will result in inflammation, muscle changes, fibrosis, and squeaking during wrist motion. These findings, along with the site and location of the pain over the dorsal forearm and wrist, which is about 5 cm distal to the wrist joint, helps to differentiate Decorvain syndrome from intersection syndrome. Provocative test. The pain gets worse with resisted wrist extension, and the x-ray will not show you anything. You will feel crepitus over the area with resisted wrist extension and thumb extension. MRI will probably show you edema or fluid surrounding the first and the second extensor compartments. Treatment is usually rest, splinting, steroid injection, try to inject around the second dorsal compartment. Don't inject the tendons. Ultrasound guided injection may be helpful. Surgery is the last resort. Release the second dorsal compartment about 5 to 6 cm proximal to the wrist joint. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.